guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So hey, this is going to be episode number nine of Project Split Decision. Where I left off in the last episode, I had uh, removed the original uh, center rails that I had put in the frame to mimic the uh, gas car. Unfortunately, they were a little too narrow. Uh, when I did that, I actually measured for a standard size battery and the Volt batteries are a little wider than a standard size battery. So what I need to do now is measure this up and get these rails reinserted, reinstalled rather and then get the uh, bolt battery tray on here and get the batteries actually in the car. So the goal for this episode is to get uh, not only the first pack of batteries, but the second pack of batteries as well. So we have basically three, about, yeah, about three quarters of the batteries will be going down uh, the uh, tube here, three quarters of the first pack, and then all of the second pack as well as the remainder of the first pack will be going behind the, uh, behind the uh, firewall here. So anyway, uh, that's what we're gonna do with this episode. So if you're interested, stay tuned and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is the tray it originally came on, and what I've done is I've actually drilled out the spot welds for the back T section so I can save this and use this on a different part of the build. And this is actually the front compartment here, which houses the battery heaters as well as the uh, BMS, the factory BMS. So now I've got this tray that I cut down that fits the entirety of the car which now what I gotta do is actually go ahead and put the batteries on there. I'm gonna break up these battery packs so I can utilize as much of that center section as possible. And the uh, other part of the battery, the part that's gonna be left over is actually gonna go right here in this front section, right in there. And then that will leave the behind the firewall for battery pack number two, the, the battery pack, which you guys don't see just yet, but it's the exact same. They're just another volt battery pack. So, uh, so anyway, Stay tuned, I'll go ahead and start ripping these cells apart and see if I can't get them back together again. Okay, there you have it. So I've got these volt batteries uh, reconfigured the way I wanted them to. So in the middle, down going down the uh, center of the console or center of the car, we're gonna have 11 kilowatts. And in the very front of the car, we're gonna have five kilowatts. That's the 16 kilowatts that the volt pack, uh, volt pack was originally uh, rated at. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. What I've gotta do next though, is I actually need to bolt these all back together again. So they come with these rods and they're actually under, I'm not exactly sure how much tension, but um, when you pull those out, you can see that they physically have separated right there and right there. So I thought before I pulled that out, that was a uh, number eight uh, M millimeter, eight millimeter, but it's actually not, this is eight millimeter and I ordered some six millimeter which we'll get here today so I can actually go ahead and pull these battery packs back together again. Even with that said, without pulling them back together, they actually would fit right now in the middle of the tunnel ramp. But when you pull it back together again, I'm probably gonna get about two or three inches out of this. So that should be really good. Um, the front there is pretty self-explanatory. Oh, let's talk about cooling for a second. All right, so the cooling is, they have a number of different ways. They have a middle passage, they have an up, and they have a straight through. So these are actually using, I actually stole some of the one part off of the other volt pack. So this is actually going straight up. So the tunnel, so the tunnel is going to hit right here. Are they, I'm sorry, the frame rail will hit right there, allowing the water to come straight up. And the back is the same way. Got a, another one of these up plates. And that's good. And then the front is actually going to drain out through this middle section here. So that's going to be up higher than the frame rails, frame rails down here. So that the cooling should not be a problem at all. Off camera, what you don't see is I went ahead and reconfigured. Thanks, Bob, for not moving that. Uh, go ahead and reconfigured the uh, second volt battery. Uh, again, that's another 16 kilowatts. Um, that that one actually is going to go in behind the firewall. That is probably going to go upright, and the problem is I don't have enough uh, length-wise to actually mount that on the floor, so I might have to go upright, or it might be at a slight angle. Don't know just yet. We got to actually get these in there to kind of figure out where we need to position that last section. So 
Well, uh, what I need to do now is go ahead and get that six millimeter, get these in here, get them bolted up, and that's one activity. The other is I actually need to mount this plate in here. So what that's gonna consist of is riv nuts. And so I'm going to drill these holes where the original ones were across the uh, outer far, or, or I'm sorry, the outer part of the uh, rail there, drill these in and go ahead and make some, uh, make this mounted permanently. Well, not permanently, but at least they can uh, be mounted. So there you have it, let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Unknown brain. Marvin Divine. Uh, I'm saying bye to all the lies and all the times you cried. Saying that I wasn't right, yet I was right by your side. You manipulator, playing games, your friends commentators. And I don't know what you say about our private conversations, but it's got them hating. Thanks for all the rumors you be claiming. It's cool, I'm done with you, so they can throw you a celebration. You gon' hate it when you see me with somebody living better. I'm trying to tell you that me just do it. So we've got the tray bolted in. Uh, what uh, we did is actually installed rib nuts and Tim was kind enough to, to install the rib nuts but then I went and welded them in because well I've actually had some rib nuts spin on me over time and that really sucks so just went ahead and, and was on the safe side and just kind of welded the top in uh, so again that's gonna hold 11 kilowatts and now what we got to do I think it that makes the most sense is to flip the car over uh, chassis over really and try to figure out where to actually mount the remainder of that first battery pack. It's gonna go in the section right here. Just not sure if we're gonna pull it out from the bottom or if we're going to lift it out from the top for like service and maintenance and stuff. So, uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and start flipping it. Yeah. <laughs> so we successfully flipped the frame over without incident which isn't always the case but tim was here and he was supervising so that worked out well for us so what we've got going on right now is we were actually able to successfully mount the 11 kilowatt pack that one right there yep up uh, against the uh, that goes inside of the car down the tunnel ramp the second battery pack right here uh which is five kilowatts is not really mounted, but that is, is actually where it's gonna live. We just need to make a, a tray for that right now. Um, so that's gonna take care of the first volt battery pack there. Each volt battery pack is 16 kilowatts. So the second battery pack, Tim? Right back here. Back there. So the second battery pack is gonna live right behind the uh, firewall, and we gotta actually mount that. We're not really sure how that's gonna work out just yet, because we're still kind of like trying to figure that out, but that's where it's gonna live. It's the only place it can live, actually. So we're good with that. So uh, next up, then, uh, we'll go ahead and show you the mounting of that second battery. Well, probably the mounting of the first battery pack and then the mounting of the second battery pack. So let's get to it. Well, I forgot to turn the time motion camera on, so we don't have any footage of the actual battery box, the front battery box being built. But this battery is now successfully installed. So we have total in the car, fully installed 16 kilowatts. So that's the first volt battery pack. The second volt battery pack, which uh, I kind of said, we don't really know how we're gonna get that all in here just yet. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Rashad, and you can tell them what's going on. All right, so guys, uh, right now we're focusing on mounting the second volt pack. Right now we have 10 kilowatts in the car. We have two five kilowatt packs here that fit nicely within the rear of the chassis. However, we have an additional six kilowatts that we're gonna try to fit inside the chassis also, but our problem is the packs are not even evenly the same size. So we're running into some issues where we're gonna to try to fabricate the pack in the small space while maintaining a low center of gravity. Right, so the problem he's referring to is Chevy has a one kilowatt pack and two kilowatt pack. So right here, this is actually a one kV and this is a two kV. The battery pack that's left over is only made up of two kVs. If it actually had two one kilowatts in it, we'd be able to split that up and make, make sure it would actually fit uh, just like the other one. So we get, actually have another uh, five kilowatts right in the row right there, which fits nicely. And then we'd only have the one little one kilowatt to actually still deal with. So we're still thinking about how we're gonna do that. We're probably gonna have to break that battery pack out and then have the two kilowatts uh, out of that pack live somewhere else in the car so that we can have a nice, uh, nice even low distribution of the weight. So, so far it's going pretty good. So anyway, that's it for now. 
made it back again. And as you can see, I am a terrible YouTuber because I've made a lot of progress and uh, from where that last little clip let off and, and now you've got this. But I didn't record that, I apologize for that. I will try to do better in the future. Anyway, I did have to make an executive decision. It's part of the reason why I don't have some of that content. We did a lot of rearranging and jiggering and configuring and trying to make this all happen. But what I ended up having to do was uh, cutting out one kilowatt per pack to keep the uh, configuration as low as possible and, and ha kind of how I wanted it within the frame rails. But uh, we're going to do a little bit more talking about the batteries and how they ultimately get configured. Uh, Rashad's going to talk about that here in just a second. So let's kind of talk about where we're at since uh, the last little clip kind of showed not as much of a car. So we've got the rear suspension completely in as well as the Tesla motor is completely in. The uh, 15 kilowatt pack off of volt pack number two is completely in and the 15 kilowatt pack off of volt number one is completely in. I've started wiring up the uh, 12 kilowatt system, or I'm sorry, the 12 volt system. That's some of those components over there and I'm gonna let my friend here talk about that. Those have to really, you have to get in the car. And the other thing you might notice is the front's not completely done. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but these parts, all the components, all, all of the suspension components are coming from total C7 cars. So a lot of times I actually have to wait and kind of look at eBay and call around and try to find the parts I need. So right now I'm still kind of actually short the driver's uh, upright. I actually did actually purchase it the other day, hadn't arrived. So once that gets in, we'll be able to get the car on all four tires and push it around the shop, which honestly is not a lot of fun. Why, why you, it's a car, why do you want to push it around? So we did make our little checklist here and uh, this is what we need to do to get the car under its own power. Can't see it on camera very well, apologize for that, kind of far back, but there's not a lot of things on there. So pretty excited about that. I believe um, we should be able to get this car under its own power by the end of the month. Might be aggressive, actually it is aggressive, but we should be able to at least maybe take it around the, uh, take it around the outside the shop here. If not, for sure next month, it will definitely be under its own power next month. Um, anyway, kind of alluded to the batteries. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Shot here and let him talk about what, uh, not only the batteries, but what we're gonna do on his channel too. Remember, this was really more focusing on the structural as well as kind of the artistic, the body lines, that kind of stuff of the car. And a lot more of the electronic components are gonna be done on his channel. So Rashad, why don't you take it away? Absolutely. All right, guys, so the last time you saw this car in Brian's previous video, you saw that we only had half of the battery pack in the car, which totaled around 15 kilowatts. However, Brian worked his magic and we cut off, like he mentioned before, one kilowatt per pack. Now we're sitting at 30 kilowatts capacity for this entire battery pack. Quick note is Chevy only charges their packs to 360 volts. However, we're gonna be working out a plan to overcharge this battery to extract that extra little bit of energy. So we'll be at around 370 volts, which is going to- 370 volts, even though it's one kilowatt less power or less uh, storage capacity. Correct, because you can reduce capacity, but while maintaining the same voltage. But for after doing that, we were also able to maintain a very low center of gravity by making sure our battery stayed mounted very low in the chassis and in line with the chassis. So everything, fit very well and we also have this uh, wired up for high voltage so you do not want to touch this kids uh, 370 volts you only find that out about once so don't try to or say twice home. I've already done it myself yeah, one Brian time. Yeah, Brian shocked himself once. It's not pleasant. It does not feel good. So, yeah, we definitely don't want to touch these battery terminals. So, and also, on the side here, we have a couple of components I'm going to touch on my channel in detail. We have the two chargers here, which are 3.3 kilowatts apiece. And we also have this component here, which is our DC to DC converter. This is what takes that high 370 volts down to 12 volts to power our accessories for the car. So, just stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot of this content on my channel, going into detail about how these different components work and how they work interface with the overall car build so back to Ryan great so I think this is a good stopping point so episode number nine here and as you can see coming up episode number 10 we're gonna be talking about some of the body lines I've actually started uh, mapping that out the uh, I've chosen to use a, a Lamborghini Aventador front windshield as well as the Corvette C7 rear glasses in the deck lid one of the biggest problems or challenges that you face if you actually decide to build your own car is the glass because uh, you're not a large manufacturer so you kind of have to work backwards. You can cut down glass, especially the windshield because it's uh, not tempered, um, but 
if you want it to really have a nice uh, factory flow, trying to preserve those curves and stuff like that are important. So it obviously it's going to have a pretty Lamborghini-ish front end. Um, I've changed the rake quite a bit on the back, uh, so you can't really tell that uh, comes off a Corvette. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go over that on episode number 10. So if you're interested, stay tuned. And uh, if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.